Hi guys, my name's Anna Keenan. Um, I'm not very good at talking in front of the camera, but I'm going to try. Um, I know you guys are all here doing the London Clinic and I hope that you guys are having good rides and learn a ton this weekend. Um, so anyway, a little about myself. I am from Eugene, Oregon. I started out trail riding actually, and then my mom bought us some horses. I eventually by age 11 got into showing horses. I did every discipline you can imagine before finally coming to dressage um, at age 13. I then took like every opportunity I possibly could, every learning opportunity, every working student opportunity because I didn't have a lot of money. Um, while I was working for various trainers, I got a lot of knowledge in starting horses, riding difficult horses, and many breeds of horses. So that eventually helped me get a young horse position at Crow Seedor Farm in Maryland. And while I was there, I got to go to Germany. I had lessons there and watch a stallion licensing. I got to go to dressage at Devon many times, which was a big goal of mine being from Oregon. Um, and then I got to take horses that I had started to the Young Horse Championships multiple times. Um, so eventually I became the head trainer at Crocedor Farm. I gained a ton of knowledge. I got to go do CDIs at dressage at Devon and down in Florida, work with Olivia Lagoy Welts and I, the journey never ends, you just have to keep working. So now I'm building my own facility and I'm starting my own career. Hi, here today helping me is Devin Pomeroy. She's a 17 year old young rider. She will be showing the St. George this year on her other horse and would like to do the junior test with Coco here. Devin has been riding in the D4K program for several years and is looking forward to a weekend of learning. So before we do any of, show you guys any of the movements or demo different things with the groundwork, we just wanna go over the purpose and the goal and why it's helpful and those kind of different things. So I'll pass that over to Anna. All right, so for me, I like to use the groundwork when starting horses. I also use it if I have a horse who's had time off, it helps me determine whether they're safe, it will also help you determine where the horse is sticky in their body, if they're sensitive, if they're dull, what kind of mood they're in. Um, it's also something good you can do just to get your horse out. It will help your horse leading to turnout. It will help your horse interacting with new obstacles such as tarps, trailers, water. Um, I like to use the rope halter for most of my introductory training. So Devin's going to show us how to properly put it on. First she wraps her arm around his neck, securing him, drops his head into the nose of the halter, and then fastens the rope halter with a quick release knot. Pulling a loop through the hole and then adjusting it on his head so that the knots do not go above his cheekbones. Devin is going to be showing the way I like to introduce the rope halter to the horse because it is a different pressure. So step one, I like to reach for the halter and at this phase they generally put their head down. Next would be step two, grabbing the halter. Step three, downward pressure. And if they don't give at that point, then you can move your hand side to side and then release. So always keep your rope safely looped. Never wrap it around your hands. I keep mine like this so that if the horse pulls on me, it will slide through my hand instead of tie up around my hand. So I think that's very important. If you look at how I am holding my rope, I like to hold it like a rein. Both of them are a little bit like reins. Um, I'm gonna start with teaching the horse how to drop its head. So I'll come in, my rope is in my right hand safely. My hand will come in to reach, 
I'll grab the halter, I'll pull down, and Coco's already responding, so I release the pressure. Now, if you have a horse learning this, they won't give right away. You will have to come in, take them down, and maybe move your halter side to side until they drop, and then you reward them. You can pet them. Important things to look for while you're teaching your horse, I like to watch their ears. If, when I teach them something and they understand it, you'll see them licking their lips. Um, these are just a few things that help me know my horse understood what I'm teaching it. So from that point, I'm going to show you how to teach the horse to back up. So I'll again bring my hand in. I've now changed my body position so my belt buckle is pointed in the direction I want to go. My energy comes up and the horse goes back. Now, she knows how to do this, so it's pretty easy. If you have a horse that doesn't, you're going to have to touch the rein, direct them backward, lift your driving hand, move it, and maybe even give them a tap until they move. Once moving, you can release that hand. And when you want the horse to completely stop, just release and drop your energy down. Good girl, Coco. So that's the first thing I like to check, is that they can back up. The second thing I'll go through is moving the haunches. You could also call this a turn on the forehand. Again, I'm going to change my body position to indicate where I want them to go. I'm going to lead with the hand. Now I'm going to lift my rope, swing it, and if the horse doesn't move, I might give them a touch. She's moving, so I release my driving energy. You can see her left hind is crossing in front of her right hind, and the left front is staying relatively in place. It's okay for it to take a step, and then I release and the horse stops. Now, when you start to teach your horse this movement, you might only get one step and then release and reward. Um, it's really important that you encourage them girl. I have a stick here too, which if you have a lazier horse, you might need. Um, I'll show you how I would use this as well. Again, I'm going to reorganize my rope so that it's safe. I'm going to lead in the direction, lift, swing, touch. And now I'm not touching my horse very hard because she's moving. If you have a horse that won't move, you can touch them a little more. And let's go over that as well. I never come in and just hit my horse. Before I ever use the stick to drive the horse, I first introduce it and let them know it's safe. It's not going to hurt them. If my stick is sitting on the horse, it means nothing. I take it away, it means nothing. If I put my stick on the horse and I vibrate it, this now means to move. And as soon as the horse moves, I release the stick. Good girl, she knows all of this. <laughs> so that way they're never scared of the whip. They don't run from it, kick at it, or balk at it. They start to understand what it means. Good girl. So now we're gonna move into step three, and that would be yielding the front end. And you could also call this a turn on the haunches or a haunch turn. Okay, now I'm going to show you the turn on the haunches. I have my stick in my hand, and again, I have repositioned my belt buckle in the direction I'm headed, my toes, all of it. So I begin with leading my hand the way I'm gonna go, picking up my energy. I might take my step, and for the step I take, she should take a step. Now you can see I lifted my whip. I didn't even have to swing it because Coco knows her job. However, if, and I drop my energy here to stop. If I pick up my energy, drive and she does it, I'm going to touch her with the whip. Now, since she knows her job, this will just speed her up. You see, she goes faster. And when I release, she stops. Good girl. Now, we talked about the whip being a, a pleasant experience for the horse. I don't come in and ever hit the horse. If I have to come in and touch the horse, I would rather annoy the horse until it chooses to re respond by moving away from the whip. 
I don't want anyone coming in and feeding their horse. This I feel is pretty important to be fair. So again, if I come in here and move the horse, if I touch this, I'm just gonna annoy the horse until it even moves faster and then I go away. So I never come in here and flat out hit my horse. Okay. Pause. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I switch directions. The horse is sitting here in mobile. All I do is cross in front of the horse. So now I'm on this side. I'm ready to go through my same checklist, which is, will the horse drop its head? Good girl. You'll notice that I've also switched my hands. So now the rope is in my left hand and my right hand is the one that dropped the horse's head down. Good girl. Then I'm going to pick up my energy, lead with my hand and drive the horse backwards. Good girl. I can check that off my list. She does that pretty soft and willing. Maybe I want to see, can I do it quicker? Good. Now you'll notice she did speed up, but she got a little bit crooked. So the next thing I'm going to do on this side is go through and move her haunches. This would be step three. So I'm going to safely put my rope in my right hand, pick up my whip. I'm going to lead her, point my belt buckle, drive her. So she was a little bit slow here, which I could tell by the crooked rein back. Good girl. So I'm waiting for there, for the right line to cross underneath her belly. Good, and see there she dropped her neck. Good, so now that I've done that, I might come back and recheck my backup to see if it's straighter. I'm gonna drive. Good, so can you see how much straighter and softer that rain back was? Let's say even if I speed it up, Good. It was pretty straight. If you want to check the straightness of your rein back, you could do it on the wall, and that way you can see if we veer off the wall or into the wall. It'll give you a better idea of straightness. So now that I've done those four checks, I'm going to check that she can move the front end. So again, I'm going to put the rein in my right hand, and I'm going to use my stick. So I've turned my toes and my belt buckle where I want to go. I'm leading, lifting. I don't have to touch her because she moved. But I would like always for this right front to cross in front of the left front. And again, if I want to go a little faster, can I? I'll pick my energy up. You'll see she tugged on me a little bit and got clumsy. There. There I had two smoother ones, and notice she's licking her lips. Good girl. She just didn't quite know I wanted to go fast yet. Okay, so this would conclude the steps I like to go through before getting on my horse. 